你見到啦，無論係 Happy 白定係 Amy Wong 咧，佢哋都能夠做到呢個動作嘅。好，二零二三年嘅第三條題目咧，係有關於關節啦，同埋肌肉嘅。今日先睇第一幅圖啦，佢就顯示咗我哋嘅右腳嘅相關嘅關節啦，同埋肌肉啦。咁我哋有肌肉 P 啦，同埋呢個關節 Y。咁關節 Y 啦，咁好明顯就係我哋嘅膝頭哥關節啦。跟住啦，再到第二幅圖咯，就顯示咗啦，一個人跑步嘅時候咧，佢一連串嘅動作啦。而今次我哋想去睇嘅咧，就係右腳嘅動作咯，就係一個震高咗成個人，跟住就屈曲咗只腳咯。阿 A 咧就问我哋啦，当呢个人啊跑步嘅时候咧，就第三个动作去到第五个动作啊，咁究竟啦，佢嗰个肌肉嘅状态有啲咩嘅变化咧？题目咧就考翻我哋啦，当一个人跑步啦，三四五嘅时候啦，究竟个关节 Y 嘅状态究竟系点样咧？就系、是、屈曲咗啦，系咪由蹬直变咗屈曲嘅？咁啊，膝盖关节就系屈曲咗啦。咁你会问啦，喂，梁 Sir？ 今朝呢個題目咧係問緊肌肉 P 嘅狀態改變，唔係問緊個關節嘅狀態改變。點解你會咁樣講咗先嘅？咁啊，因為啦，關節嘅動作係建基於肌肉嘅狀態改變啊嘛。咁所以啦，我哋就嚟睇一個思考邏輯咯。而家啦，我哋嘅肌肉 P 就楞住咗我哋呢個膝蓋關節嘅。究竟呢個肌肉 P 係依附住骨頭嘅咩位置咧？呢邊咧就楞住個攞有位嘅，而另一端咧就係楞住個小腿下面呢條骨嘅。第二啦，我哋就諗下，當肌肉收縮嘅時候，究竟啦，肌肉係會變得短咗啊，定係長咗咧？咁當然啦，肌肉收縮就梗係短咗噶啦，係咪？咁所以啦，當呢個肌肉 P 收縮嘅時候咧，就會向上有一個拉力，就會將個小腿咧就向後拉咯，自然膝關節係咪就會屈曲啊？所以答案咧就係肌肉 P 咧就正在進行收縮啦。跟住去到 Part B 咧就問我哋咯，建基於 Part A 嘅答案啦。哦，肌肉 P 咧收縮嘅時候個關節 Y 即係膝關節咧就會屈曲啦。咁究竟啦肌肉 P 有咩嘅角色咧？你諗下啦，唔係問關節，唔係問肌肉。我頭先一開始諗咗關節嘅話呢，拍 B 呢條題目就好做好多啦。肌肉 P 係屈肌定係伸肌，同埋咩原因呢？咁呢條題目啦，自不然就梗係考返關節啦，同埋肌肉嘅互動啦。咁我哋就諗下啦，屈肌同伸肌有啲咩嘅分別呢？屈肌收縮嘅時候呢，肢體係會屈曲，或者關節係會屈曲嘅。伸肌收缩嘅时候咧，肢体系会伸直或者关节系会伸直嘅。咁我啱啱都讲过啦，肌肉 P 收缩嘅时候，关节 Y 膝关节就会屈曲。咁自不然，肌肉 P 就梗系屈肌啦。所以啦，答案咧，肌肉 P 系屈肌，因为肌肉 P 收缩嘅时候就会引致关节 Y 嘅屈曲。下次題目如果唔係問你 muscle P 嘅，咪問你上面大髀呢嚿肌肉咯，咁咪我當叫阿 Q 啦，好冇？咁今次啦，佢就問你啦，當呢個人三去五嘅時候 ，muscle P 係咩嘅狀態啫？嚇，咁下次咪問下你 muscle Q 嘅狀態咯。咁下次咧，佢都可以問翻你繼續跑步噶嘛，一二三四五咪去翻一啦，係咪？喂，究竟啦，由五去到一嘅時候啦，喂，佢只右腳咧，啊呢、這個 muscle P 佢又有咩變化？呢、这個 muscle P 嘅狀態又如何啊？呢、这個關節 Y 又如何啊？咁你見到啦，咁你只腳蹬直咗嘅。喂，咁究竟啊，係 muscle P 收縮啦，定係 muscle Q 收縮咧？從來都係咁樣問嘅啫，冇技巧可言嘅。好，跟住啦，去到 Part C 咧，就講翻一個人咧跑步嘅時候咧，膝頭哥就受傷咯喎。咁呢幅圖咧就顯示咗啦，究竟佢個關節嘅咩部分受傷咧？就係、是、Q 呢個位啦，佢就撕裂咗喎。哦，咁究竟啦？結構 Q 撕裂咗嘅呢個情況係會點樣影響到呢個關節 Y， 影響到關節 Y 嘅功能呢？咁呢個題目啦，自不然就考下我哋啦。究竟結構 Q 你係韌帶啊，定係肌腱嚟㗎？咁兩個定義呢，我俾晒大家啦。韌帶呢，就係將呢個活動關節上面嘅兩塊骨頭呢連接起上嚟嘅，而肌腱呢，就係一個好。坚韧没有弹性嘅结构，就将个骨架肌咧附喺个骨头上面嘅。嗱，咁基础定义俾咗大家先。咁我哋一齐嚟睇下个思考应假咯。一开始啦，究竟结构 Q 系乜嘢？系韧带定系肌腱？我哋见得到啦，佢系楞住骨头噶嘛，系咪？咁自不然啦，佢梗系韧带啦。
。咁當我哋知道咗啦，結構 Q 係韌帶嘅時候啦，當結構 Q 韌帶撕裂嘅時候，對呢個膝關節又有啲咩嘅影響呢？韌帶呢就係將骨頭黐埋一齊噶嘛，咁而家冇啦，咁而家佢撕裂咗，自不然啊骨頭就唔能夠連接起上嚟啦。又或者啦，本身韌帶就係避免活動嘅時候去甩膠啊嘛，自不然啊就係當呢個人再次喐動行啊跑步嘅時候呢。呢、这個關節歪嘅骨頭咧，就機會甩教咯。咁對於我哋嘅膝關節有啲咩嘅負面影響咧？就係、是、令就係、是、令到我哋嘅下肢咧，喺呢個關節歪嘅活動咧，就會出現困難啦。嗱，呢個題目咧就好典型嘅直線抽擊答題，亦都示範下一次兜圈答題俾大家睇啦。咁有啲同學咧就唔係直接去講韌帶撕裂咗之後佢做唔到啲乜嘢嘅，相反啊，佢就係講韌帶本身做緊啲乜嘢。嗱，韌帶咧，二三四，佢就先講啦，結構 Q 咧，韌帶嚟嘅，有彈性添，喂，有啲。料到喎，系嘛？然後啦，藍色呢句佢就講啦，韌帶咧就係固定骨頭嘅位置，同埋避免佢哋活動嘅時候甩臼。佢就走去講咗韌帶嘅功能。咁而家韌帶撕裂啊嘛，你咪應該直接走去講啦。佢冇辦法將兩嚿骨頭連接起上嚟，或者啦關節歪喺喐動嘅時候就會出現甩臼嘅情況。所以啦，後面呢句就諗住補多一句喎。嗱，咁而家當韌帶撕裂嘅時候咧，只腳就做唔到嘢啦。咩叫只腳做唔到嘢啊？唔能夠跑，唔能夠跳，唔能夠行啊！你都話俾我聽啊，嗰、那個人 cannot walk， cannot move， 我都可以有你。但係啦，你淨講只腳，只腳不能夠正常咁功能，我就唔明你講乜嘢啦。大家一定要掌握翻直線抽擊答題法嘅精髓啦。咁過往咧都有唔少題目係有關於關節啦、韌帶同肌腱嘅，咁啊快啲睇下片翻下書咯。好，跟住啦，去到一點出發啦。咁呢個題目就講膝關節啦，咁自不然啦，佢係咩關節啦？佢係教練關節。咁下次題目問下你球窩關節 ，ball and soccer 得唔得啊？梗係得啦，係咪？咁呢個題目啦，再問兩樣嘢嘅，一個呢就係骨骼肌啦，第二個就係韌帶啦。咁骨骼肌啦，就係有伸肌、屈肌啦，咁佢哋就係呢、這個。a n t a g o n i s t i c muscle 或者 opposing muscle 或者叫做結抗肌啦，都要考埋我哋肌腱嘅概念啦。而肌腱啊同埋韌帶呢，我哋都好興去問返嘅適應性特徵嘅。咁除咗肌腱同埋韌帶之外呢，咁我不厭其煩，梗係問下你軟骨啦。咁所以啦，喂，究竟軟骨、肌腱、韌帶佢係如何適應到佢嘅功能呢？嗱，留意喎，你就要將佢哋個結構呢。同佢嘅功能拉上關係喎，呢、这個先叫做適應性特徵啊嘛，係咪？然後啦，就去到做運動咯。你見到啦，無論係 Happy 白定係 Amy Wong 咧，佢哋都能夠做到呢個動作嘅。啊，咁啊，有陣時條題目可能問下你右腳，下次可能問下你左腳，跟住問下你左手，又或者問下你右手得唔得啦？我手腳都可以問你啊，係咪？跟住啦，就到睇病學擺屙咯。今次咧就韌帶撕裂啦，係咪？除咗韌帶撕裂之外啦，有冇其他病痛啊？就系、是、例如啦，软骨变薄啦，系咪？嗱，而家啦喺个膝头哥咧，佢就俾幅图你睇啦，软骨变薄咗啦。咁啊，讲下款病啦，就叫退化性膝关节炎。咁你见得到咯，喺膝盖咧，哇，肿胀咗。啊，咁当中啦，自不然可以考下我哋啲病征啦。讲到明发炎啦，红肿发热啦，系咪？咁做啲咩嘅症状啊？就系、是、痛楚啦。嗱，两样嘢大家要留意翻噶嘛。病征咧系能够观察到、量度得到嘅。系咪？你摸上去轻轻地嘅，望起上嚟红红地嘅，肿肿地嘅。而症状咧，系个病人自己感受得到嘅啫嘛，就系、是、个痛楚嘅。你系好难量度到佢嘅痛楚嘅。咁所以啦，嗱，两个字亦都顺势解解释俾大家听啦。咁其实仲有啲咩题目可以问咧？当少少贴题啦。关于软骨变薄咧，下次可能可以问下你有啲保健产品。啊，食某一啲嘢咧，就能够啦补充到咧关节嘅所需嘅一啲成分。啊，咁佢。有冇用噶？或者啦，问下你有关于一啲手术嘅概念啦，就系、是、人工关节置换术啦，系咪？换翻个人工嘅膝头关节啦，啊咁究竟系咪就系一了百了咧？都唔识。咁呢类型咧都系一啲可变嘅题型嚟嘅。Two to three question three is about the joint and the skeletal muscle. So you can see that in the diagram one, it shows the right leg with the associated joint, joint Y, which is the knee joint, and the muscle P. And then for the diagram two, it shows a series of motions during running with the right leg highlighted in grey. So in part A, in order to bring about the changes in the motion from three to five, so what is the change of the state of muscle P? So for this question, we need to realize the state of the joint Y during motion from three to five first. So you can see that the joint Y 
the knit joint is bent from three to five. So you may ask that, no, 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 Mr. Leung, this question is asking, what is the change of state of muscle P? So why do you talk about the joint state? You need to know that the state of the joint, it depends on the state of the muscle. So let's talk about the thinking logic. First of all, you need to think about which parts of the joint are attached by the muscle P. So you can see the muscle P here, one part attached to our pet pet, and, and the other end, it joins, and the other end, it attached to the lower limb. That's the first key point. And the second key point, you need to think about that. When muscle contracts, it will be shortened or lengthened. So when muscle contract, surely it should be shortened. Because it is shortened, it will generate a pulling force during the muscle contraction. So that's why the lower limb it will be pulled backwards and then to make the joint to be bent. Therefore, muscle P is contracting. And after that, for part B, with respect to the answer in part A, states the role of the muscle P by circling the following choices in A and completes the sentence in space 2. So you can see that I have already talked about the knee joint. The joint Y is bent when the muscle P is contracting. So, so I can finish this question easily. For this question, is talking about the joint and also the muscle condition. And then we need to distinguish flexor from the extensor. When the flexor contracts, limbs bent or the joint is bent. And then when the extensor contracts, the limb strengthens or the joint is strengthened. So you can see that now muscle P contract, joint Y is bent, therefore muscle P is the flexor. Because the contraction of P bends the joint at Y. So straightforward is this question. And maybe next time it can ask you that another muscle on this side. Now this muscle is muscle P. Maybe next question asks you another muscle, opposing muscle, muscle Q. So from three to five of the state of the muscle Q, surely it is relaxing. Or it can ask you that from the motion five to motion one. So what is the change of the state of the muscle Q? So you can see that from five to one, the joint is strengthened, the right leg strengthened. Therefore, the muscle Q is contracting, right? And for part C, a person injured his knee while running. So in diagram three, it shows the condition of the joint Y after the injury. So you can see that structural Q was tall. So how would this affect joint Y and its functioning? So this question surely is checking us the concept about the ligament and the tendon. How can we distinguish them? So I give you the definition first. At the joint, the bones are held together by a tough sheet of the elastic fiber called ligaments. And then the tendon, the skeletal muscle, are attached to the bones by tough and inelastic tendons. So we have the basic idea now. And then let's go through the scaffolding. First of all, what is structure Q? Structure Q, you can see from this diagram, I enlarge it a bit. So they are supposed to hold the bones together. Therefore, it should be the ligament. So after we know that structure Q is the ligament, so we need to state what would happen in the knee joint if the ligament was torn, was damaged. So you can see that the ligament holds the bones in position and prevent dislocation during movement. So for this part, easy to talk about it. So without the ligament to hold the two bones together, or there will be dislocation of the bones at the joint Y. And then we need to state the negative effect of the torn structure on the knee joint. So it will be difficult to move the leg at joint Y. Or you can say that the patient cannot walk properly. Um, so you can see that it's about the straight to the point skills. But what about some students, they just do the merry-go-round. They try to answer something, but they cannot hit the main point. They may talk about that. Structure Q is the ligament, which is elastic. Oh, quite good, good starting. And then the structure Q holds bones together in position and prevents dislocation during the movement. Oh, they also talk about the function of the structure Q, the ligament. However, they do not talk about that. If ligament is Damage. What they cannot do, or the ligament cannot hold bones in position. The ligament cannot prevent dislocation during movement. They just talk about the ligament function. 
but they do not talk about the effect of the torn ligament. So you may think that, oh no, well, Mr. Leung, they really talk about it. Well, if the this some say, if this structure is torn, the leg cannot function well. Or, but what do you mean the leg cannot function well? Cannot jump, cannot walk, cannot run. At least you can tell me, the patient cannot walk rather than the leg cannot function. What do you mean the leg cannot function? And then you can watch the video before about the joint, ligaments, and tendon for revision. So let's talk about the curriculum mapping. First of all, this question is about the knee joint, which is a type of hinge joint. So what about other type of joint? For example, the ball and socket joint. One of the examples is the shoulder joint, right? And then we talk about the skeletal muscles and the ligament. And for the skeletal muscle, we talk about the extensor, flexor, and the concept of the antagonistic muscle. And we also talk about the tendon. So for the tendon, for the ligament, we always talk about the adaptive features. And surely I want to add one more for you is the cartilage. So the possible question variation is that state how the cartilage, tendon, ligament are adapt to their functions. So you try to answer it in the comment section and we combine all the idea. We talk about the movement, no matter Uncle Happy or Amy Wong. So they also do the same movement. So this question, I may ask you right leg. For next question, I ask you left leg. Next question, or I ask you the right arm or left arm. Every limbs, I can ask you. And then after that, we talk about the disease approach. This time, we talk about that the ligament is torn. So what about next time I talk about the femur cartilage, which is another disease called osteoarthritis of knee. So you can see from this picture, the swollen joint. So you can recall the sign of this disease, redness, swelling, and warmth. That's something we can observe, we can measure. And what about the symptoms? Only the patient can feel it by themselves. This time it's about the painful sensation. And then after we talk about the disease, next time it asks you about the health supplement. Oh, maybe in an essay question, it, it tells you some basic idea of some health supplement about the joint. So uh, are they really that effective, useful to heal the patient, to help the patient to recover a bit? or any other surgery we can do. For example, the artificial joint replacement surgery. So that's something we can learn from the book.